In this video, I'll be covering the experiences of what it's like to be an international medical student here in the Philippines. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Luis and I'm a third year medical student from the Philippines. It is well known that the cost of a medical education in most Western countries is very expensive, which makes the Philippines a very attractive option for many international medical students. In this video, I'll be interviewing my classmate Gino, a Filipino who grew up in the US and went to college there before coming here to pursue his medical degree. Among the things we talk about are the challenges he's faced as an international medical student and what his career plans are after he graduates. Okay, so Gino, to start things off, why did you decide to pursue your medical education here in the Philippines? Aside from being an international student, my medical school journey was a little different from other people in that I started late. So I graduated college and then I decided to work for a few years. And then after that point, I needed to go back to school for another year to finish the med school prerequisites. At which point I was a few years out of college, a little older. So my goal was to get into medical school as quickly as I could. And I saw the Philippines as being that route. So I took the NMAT while also studying for the MCAT, applied and just the way things worked out. Going to school in the Philippines was the quickest way I could start medical school. And at the same time, I didn't feel like I was sacrificing that much in terms of my education because I was confident that I'd be able to become a, a good doctor. Did you consider, had you gotten accepted into a medical school in the States, would you have gone there or would you still prefer to go here to avoid the, the debt that is associated with taking a medical education in the States? So I didn't touch on it, but that's another huge factor that had me considering the Philippines. Uh, I had loans from undergrad that I still have today. And the thought of undertaking more debt especially the, the cost of tuition in the States. For me, it would have put it almost even. I, I would have considered it definitely, but I don't know, it's tough to say if, if presented with both options right in front of me, which one I would have taken. But the thing is at the time, it would have taken me like another year or so to get into school into the States because I still needed to finish all of these requisites. So for me, time, was really the the big thing that pushed me to pursue school in the Philippines. What initial challenges did you face as an international student when you came here? I think the big thing for me, so I, I'm Filipino-American, but I did not speak Tagalog growing up. My parents would speak to me in Tagalog so then I can understand it pretty well. I think I can pick up and understand most conversations, especially with context clues. But when it comes to actually speaking Tagalog, that's where I really struggled when I first moved. I, I remember when I interviewed for the school, I asked my interviewers, so when will I really need to be using Tagalog? And they're like, oh, don't worry, you won't need it until you get to get into the clinics. And then I remembered like maybe one of the first or second weeks of school, we had to interview a patient right off the back. And I was like, oh, here we go. So the language barrier was definitely the biggest thing I have to overcome. And I'm still overcoming to this day. But I, I think I'm kind of at a benefit because I can understand the language. So I'm halfway there, but being able to speak it and speak it confidently, let alone with patients, is, a, is another thing. On top of the language barrier, did you experience any culture shock coming here? Because obviously you grew up in a very American, Western culture. And even though you did grow up to a certain extent Filipino, it's still different from the experience of actually growing up in the Philippines. You know, I, everyone was just so nice when I first arrived. I remember one of our batchmates, she sat next to me one of their first or second days. And I think she could tell how nervous I looked. And then she just started talking to me and uh, kind of like being open and trying to, like I could tell she was really trying to be friendly. And I, I guess I just wasn't used to that kind of warmth. So that, culture difference kind of actually actually worked to a benefit for me because everyone was so willing to open themselves up and kind of like welcome me in even though I could be considered an outsider or a foreigner in a sense. So you were kind of taken off guard on how hospitable our, our batchmates were to you despite being someone who, who necessarily wasn't an insider. I was. I mean, I, I spent most of my life in the Northeast of America. I went to school in New York and people are, aren't that amiable, especially when you first meet them. It gets a lot colder and like much more curt and to the point. So when everyone was like hugging when they were first met and like, I don't know, there's just like a lot of joy when people were greeting each other. And I, I, I wasn't used to that, but I'm thankful for it because I think about the alternative if I entered a cold environment as a foreigner, it might've been more difficult for me. How did you form new connections given you didn't really know anyone when you initially came here? I was in the interesting position because I was in school. And I think school kind of forces you to make these connections, like boilerplate, you have your professional connections, but it's inevitable when you're around people that often you're gonna make friends. That was really beneficial for me because that's how I found my circle. That's how I started to feel more comfortable and kind of felt like I had a family 
in the Philippines, although I didn't have any immediate family there. Do you ever get asked if you plan to work here or you end up going abroad to practice medicine? Being from the States, I get asked that question all the time by profs. Uh, Wired batch meets when I first moved. And actually, I, I was asked that question during my interview with the with ASMPH. They asked me flat out, so after medical school, is it your intention to return to the States? My answer to them is my same answer now. Yes, my intention is to return to the States. After my education, it's where my family is. It's where my parents are. And uh, after medical school, I would have been away from them for five years. Uh, with training, who knows how much longer that'll take. So when I'm settled, I would like to be closer to them. But with that being said, to be honest, if I look back maybe 10 years or five years, I don't know, I could say I pictured myself studying in the Philippines, you know? So I feel like being able to take that leap kind of opened me up to other options. Like I would be willing to go anywhere. But yeah, I think that that core value of wanting to return to my parents and raise my family near them remains true. What did you enjoy the most about studying here in the Philippines while we were still having face-to-face -face classes. It, it was really something to be able to just be injected into a group of people and just have like suddenly have this new friend group of people that I had never really been around my entire life. Just gained all of these new friends, all these new social circles, having chosen to go to school in the Philippines that I would have never been able to experience in the States. So the connections I've made with people, I think is what makes studying in the Philippines the most enjoyable thing for me. Do you have any advice for international medical students looking to take their medical education here, whether uh, they're Filipinos who grew up abroad or uh, non-Filipinos looking to take their medical education here? I think this advice would be true for anyone thinking about going to medical school. I think you have to make sure that your intentions are clear and that they're yours. Regardless of if you do it abroad or if you do it at home, medical school is gonna be difficult. It's gonna be demanding. You're gonna be away from your family. And they, they tell us this in school all the time. If it gets tough, try to remember your why. You know, if you can remember your why, that what your motivation is for being there, then it'll make everything doable, you know? so. I think that's what's carried me through studying abroad. Like, yeah, it's been tough. It's been tough being away from my family. Like things have happened at home where I obviously couldn't go home easily. I missed out on certain events, but at the core of it, I knew that studying abroad was my decision and that I wanted to go to school in the Philippines to become a doctor. And for that reason, I, I never had any regrets. I never considered maybe this wasn't for me because when I started the process, I knew that I was 100% committed. And I think if you're 100% committed, it'll make everything else that much easier. So I hope you guys learned a lot from watching this video. If you want to learn more about the application process to medical schools here in the Philippines, check out my playlist here. And if you want to learn more about the NMAT, check out this playlist here. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.